this is Outdoor Retreat, which is a DLC that lets you go camping and stuff, and it costs like 20 bucks, which is a lot. But I don't think you actually need to spend all of your precious bucks for your sims to go camping, and I'm gonna prove it by building a campsite using just the base game. And the very first thing that I did here was, of course, build a lake. Now I'm building this on the Oakenstead, I suppose is how you pronounce that, lot. It's that lot in Willow Creek that has usually the fancy uninhabited mansion in it, in the same neighborhood as where that ugly modern sort of mansion is that normally the Spencer Kim Lewis family lives in by default. And this lot is basically already surrounded by water. But, I mean, come on, we need another lake. This is gonna be especially useful for you if you do decide to download this for yourself, but maybe place it somewhere else where there isn't as much water around. And besides, this lot is really big and we need to fill it somehow. Also, by the way, ignore the items that I put down in the corner there, those are just for later. So for this I kept looking at the surrounding water and tried to imitate it as closely as possible, which is of course not entirely possible, but I mean to a degree. I also saw some things that I shouldn't have seen probably, but shh, it's okay. We never saw. I found this cute little boat in debug that I decided I wanted to put on there as well because I mean it's just perfect. Look at it, so cute. And of course, I couldn't build a campsite with a lake without also building a pier. I mean, come on. And originally I wanted to make it so that your sims can actually fish off of the pier in the lake. But unfortunately, that's not how the game works. I wish it did work that way, but unfortunately it doesn't. As you can see, I brought Bob Pancakes over to test everything for me and he said no. So instead, I put the fishing spot slightly to the left of the pier and your sims can just fish from there. I think that's okay too. The next thing that I did is build a trailer or an RV or a caravan. I still don't know what to call it. I still don't know if all of those words mean different things or if it's like different words for the same thing from different parts of the world or something, but we are building like a camping house on wheels, yes? So what you are looking at right now is on the bottom I've got this item that I found in the debug menu. Which I'm so confused why that's in the game. What's it for? What were they planning? What were they going for? But I'm glad that they did put it in because it's perfect for stuff like this. And I honestly expected it to be a lot harder to get this thing to look just right. But it was a lot easier than I expected. Unfortunately though, it wouldn't be The Sims without the glitches, which how long has it been like three minutes, four minutes almost? And we've already run into the first visual glitch. I mean, look at it. It's kind of like the frame part. I don't know what that's actually called, but the frame around the roof is kind of weird. It's kind of see-through when you look at it from certain angles. I don't know why it does that. I don't know how to fix it. You probably can't fix it, so unfortunately we're just gonna have to deal with it. Luckily it's not that noticeable anyway, especially not later on when I put in more stuff as well as surrounded by plants and so on, but still kinda sucks. I'm guessing we're gonna have to hope that by the time that you download this, if you decide to do that, that it's just gonna be fixed then in an update. Regardless of that though, I really like how the shape is coming along. I managed to get it across a lot better than I expected, to be honest. It took me a while to get the perfect door and windows that I wanted. And originally, I wanted to have the stairs go sort of sideways, but not possible. I'm guessing it's because it's clipping with an item on the bottom. And so your sims are just like, no, I can't go down there, something's in the way. So instead I had to place the stairs like this, which might look a little bit silly, but if it works, it works. And that's all I'm really worried about. I then moved on to the interior and I didn't do anything special in here. I basically just furnished it to be like sort of a teeny tiny apartment, which I guess is exactly what these things are, aren't they? <laughs> 
<laughs> a tiny apartment on wheels. So we have like a bathroom, a kitchen, a little dining area and a bedroom. Well, not really, but you know. At the time I used like a blue and pink color scheme, but I changed this later on because I decided to make the entire campsite match. Oh, and I also put in a skylight because why not? And I expected this to be like super finicky and horrible, but it was actually kind of easy. Pleasantly surprised by the sims. To do this, I simply used a roof piece and then used the glass roof on it, which means that it's going to be slightly at an angle, but it's barely noticeable. The next thing that I did was build a little tent area outside of our RV or caravan or trailer or whatever other words there are for this. And I know what you're thinking right now. Duh! That's me. You said earlier that you would only use the base game. And now you're using the tents from that DLC. Well, actually, I am not using any items from a DLC. That's kind of what inspired this whole thing in the first place, is that there are actually functional hidden tents in the debug menu that you can access using cheats. The reason why we have this is because ages ago, don't ask me how long, I can't remember it at all because I didn't participate in it, but there was like this in-game festival for like a certain amount of time that your sims could visit and they added a lot of items for that into the game and one of those items was functional tents. And after that event was over, I suppose they just left them in because why not? And now we can build functional campsites using just the base game, yay! I also drew in some paths just to get us started there, but for the entrance itself I decided to do sort of like a roundabout type of path thingy and in the middle I wanted to have kind of like a feature. Maybe like a sign that we can pretend has the name of the campsite on it or something. And then maybe some like sculptures, which I found these woodworking sculptures, again using cheats. <laughs> Normally these are tiny but I sized them up. These are those thingies that your sims can build using the woodworking table and I found like two cute swans and like um, a seal maybe, whatever that is. And then I just surrounded it using some flowers. But actually don't get too attached to the swans and the maybe seal because I'll be replacing those later because I actually found other woodworking thingies that I find are so much more fitting for a campsite. We'll get to that later. Close to the entrance, I also built like a picnic and grill area because I mean, we need one of those. Would be kind of weird if we built a campsite without one of those. And I surrounded it with this cool hedge that I also found in debug. And this is really nothing special, it's just a few picnic benches as well as grills. And honestly, once again, this is probably kind of unnecessary because I bet there is an area like this somewhere in the environment here. I mean, I haven't looked, but I bet there is, because there is an area like this everywhere in the base game worlds. It seems to be the thing that they put when they don't know what else to put, but they need something. And then I got to building the little cabin. Well, it's actually quite a big cabin, honestly. And I gave it like a little port, and before anybody tells me that I should have done this. I did try to do this where I like use the triangle pieces to sort of have the like beams go in the same direction as the porch but I didn't like how it looked because they just they didn't really line up properly did they? So I just deleted that and had all of the beams go in the same direction. It's fine. You probably wouldn't have even noticed this. Come on. Next up, I built like a little public bathroom, which was honestly kind of difficult because how do you build a public shower? What goes in a public shower? I don't know. I really just put random stuff in there. <laughs> I was really just like, well, I guess they need towels probably, right? And a seat? I don't know. Roofing in this game 
is hard and it took me a while. It wasn't the worst case I ever had. I mean, compared to some other bills that I made in the past, this one was honestly okay. But still, I did struggle with it a bit. But as you can see, I kind of did like a hidden second floor with dormers coming out. I think that's so cool. If I could, I would do something like this on every single build. <laughs> and I also decided to delete a part of the port because I just couldn't figure out the roofing. That's probably honestly the best tip that I have when it comes to roofing in this game is that sometimes there really isn't a solution. Like, I'm sorry, but sometimes you really just gotta be like, I'm not figuring this out right now, at least not in a timely manner. So sometimes you really just gotta, I mean, delete part of the building and then <laughs> make it easier for the roof. I then moved on to the inside of the cabin where I didn't do much, honestly. I didn't want to absolutely overload and overcrowd this lot, especially because we're also already doing a lot on the outside, obviously. So I could have put in a lot more detail, but I didn't. And also I placed in a bathroom sink in the kitchen. Did you see that? I find this later on and I remember just thinking to myself, why did I do that? I didn't do that, did I do that? But I did that. And I have it on camera as well. I don't know why I did that. Well, needless to say, I fixed this later on. It's a very minor thing to be worried about, but still, I'm just like, what's going on with my brain? <laughs> anyway, we're moving on to the upstairs now. Downstairs, I built like a general hangout area with some tables and a fireplace, as well as a gym with showers and a kitchen with a bathroom sink, apparently. Up here I built a bathroom as well as a library sort of, I mean really just another hangout area. I also put in a dorm in case you want to sleep inside rather than outside, I totally understand. And in the hallway here I just put a chess table because why not? And here is what it looks like so far from the outside and also the entire lot. I think it's coming along pretty nicely. I also made sure to playtest everything to ensure that you can actually use these items and they're not blocked or anything like that. And then afterwards out here I built the playground. So I put in the cool pirate ship as well as the monkey bars and some benches and other stuff for kids to do and surrounded it using these cool hedges. Also by the way if you're curious why maybe I'm not using certain stuff that I probably should be using because it just makes sense. This video is actually pre-recorded and I mean pre-recorded by a lot. So if you're like, hey, why are you not using this new feature that we just got in an update? That's why, because I don't have it yet. Also, please don't worry about the path and the terrain paint overall. That's still a work in progress. I'm gonna come back to that and change that. It's not gonna stay this way. But yeah, again, I put in some more lights. And then I moved on to make another tent area. This one is pretty similar to the first one that we built. I once again put in some tents, obviously, as well as a rug on the floor. And I decided to put around some chairs in a circle as well as a guitar. I would have loved to put like a campfire or something, but we don't have anything like that in the base game. So I kind of just put a circle of chairs and we gotta live with that. <laughs> And everything was going very well until I discovered this. The hedges that I placed on the lot are actually not solid. This is a pretty common problem with those cheated items from Debug. Is that because they are meant for the environment and not the actual lots that you play on, they don't bother making them solid, right? And boy oh boy aren't you glad that you're watching a video and not actually building this yourself because oh look it's fixed now. What I did here to keep this from happening is I just put in a little low fence into the hedge. In some areas you can't tell at all, in other areas it pokes out quite a bit but honestly I don't mind that. The next thing that I built here was a garden and the footage here is pretty self-explanatory so I want to talk to you about something else. <laughs> Which is the reason why I'm building this in the first place. I mean it's of course mainly for fun and to prove my point from earlier but also 
I had an idea, and unfortunately for everyone, I can't delete the idea from my mind. Which is, you probably already guessed it, to make my own save file. Ooh. If you're not so familiar with The Sims, let me explain. Basically, it's not uncommon for people out there on the internet to upload their save files for other people to then download and play with them and, you know, play with their builds and play with their sims and stuff. Yeah, and I just kept thinking, how cool would it be to make something like that myself? Because let's be real, while the original builds and the default townies are pretty cool and iconic, I mean, they, they could be better. I don't want to like roast the game. I mean, I'm literally playing with Bob and Eliza Pancakes right now. My idea for it as well is to, because I do own a lot of the packs, but I would like to build it specifically in a way where even if you don't have all of the packs, you can still play. Or maybe if you don't have any packs at all, you can still play. And let's be realistic here, I would probably never finish it, because come on. But yeah, that's what I've been thinking about. Okay, but back to the process. I jumped around from one end to the other on the lot and just added in a bunch of, well, stuff. <laughs> and this is also where I finally realized that I wanted to change that entrance thingy. Because I realized there's also this like lumberjack and this grizzly bear woodworking thingy. I don't know why I missed this earlier when I looked through here, but I did. Unfortunately, I couldn't figure out a good way to include the grizzly as well. So I just put the lumberjack for now. And honestly, I think this fits our theme so much better. It's also not uncommon for campsites to have a stage with live music or maybe like kids activities or something like that. So I decided to put one of those in as well. Now remember when I talked about that festival event from earlier, which is also the reason why we have tents in the base game? I'm pretty sure they also had a stage, but I'm not sure if I would be able to find it and if it's even functional in the first place. So I just decided to build my own little thing. And at first I decided to put like this fence with those fairy lights with the flip-flops in the background. I also remembered that colored lights existed, so I played around with those for a bit. I made the stage green originally, and I also put in colored lights in the pool. And once again, the closer I get to finishing a lot, the more I sort of jump around. So I placed in a tree here and played around with some other lights somewhere else. And while I was adding some finishing touches somewhere else, I remembered that this item right here exists. This has also been added with a free update. It's been a while, but I still kind of forget that we have it. And guess what? It fit the stage that I built perfectly. Like it was the exact same size. That's so lucky. So of course I had to use it. But I didn't really like the background from earlier anymore, so instead I just replaced it with a simple fence. And the next step was to add the finishing touches, which is basically what I've been doing this entire time already, but I gotta name these chapters something. So this is mostly about landscaping as well as the terrain paint, but also just adding random stuff in random locations. I used a lot of debug plants in the remaining areas that are too small to do anything with but too big to leave empty and I basically just made it look really overgrown. I really like how it turned out in the end. The color scheme that I've been using here is like green and red and pink so that's what I did with the plants as well. Oh, and I also put in like a painting class. Well it's really just three easels in a row but I like to call it the painting class because there was this area next to the lake and I was like, hmm, I gotta do something here. And I think this is such a cute idea. I placed the easels in a way where if you paint from reference, you can actually paint the lake. I'm pretty sure I tested that. I'm pretty sure it works out. I hope I'm not making this up. <laughs> and I also finally moved on to fixing the path here, which I had to redo a few times because this is hard, but I really like how it turned out in the end. My strategy here was basically to use this lighter path and then a darker path on the edges. 
I kind of looked at the surrounding area and what the paths look like there, and they kind of look like they did this. I mean, obviously better because they have the better tools probably, but I tried to match mine pretty closely. I also put some items on the port at some point, which I didn't record because there was nothing special, literally just seats and lights. But yeah, that happened as well. I also made sure that the lot looks nice at night by putting in a lot of lights and then testing to see how it looked at night. I didn't include a lot of clips of that in the video, but it is happening, I'm also doing that. And I also thought that the whole thing kind of looked too open and I didn't want to completely close it off with like a big wall or something but I did also kind of want to have a fence and I basically just did the same thing that I also did on the campsite itself where I used the low fence and then put that hedge on top. And I don't know, maybe I should have said this in the beginning, but this is actually my very first video over here. Yeah. <laughs> not my first video on YouTube, not my first post on the internet. I've actually been sharing my art and my animations for a while on here as well as on Insta. But I've been thinking I should make like a gaming or a Sims focused channel for a while now and now I did, yippee. I'll go ahead and I'll link my other accounts for you at the end. I mean, I've got nothing else to link to on here yet anyway. And given the fact that I'm just starting out here, it would be really cool if you wanted to, if you could interact with the video and tell the algorithm that you liked it so that more people will see it. Tee <laughs> And also, if you do enjoy this video, which I hope you do, I have some good news for you. Because you see, I kinda have this history, <laughs> this reputation on my other accounts for never posting. Seriously, it's quite bad. And I told myself if I want to make another channel, then I shouldn't let that happen again where I have it but I actually don't really post. At least I don't want it to happen at first. And this isn't actually the only video that I pre-recorded, I got some more. So I'll actually be back next week mm -hmm. and then the week after that's right weekly uploads incredible for my standards but yeah stay tuned for that <laughs> and the very last thing that i did is place these fairy lights everywhere i'm pretty sure these are also from that event that they did ages ago that i talked about earlier and with that it's done and I recorded some clips of it showing everything off. I shall put them here for you And if you want to download this for yourself, I will put this on the gallery Once again, this only requires the base game as well as the free holiday bundle And I'm gonna call it base game campsite And if you want to navigate to my gallery page, I'm just called Lady Lua over there That's spelled as Lady Luia and along with what we made here today, I want to upload one more thing to the gallery as a little bonus, which I'm gonna call a BG Debug Campsite Kit. Man, what a name. Which is basically just gonna be a room with a lot of the debug items that I used here, so like the bottom of the trailer or RV or caravan, and the lights as well as the tents. So that in case you want to make your own base game only campsite, you don't need to go looking for them. And in case I ever want to use them again, I don't need to go looking for them either. Oh, and by the way, since this is pre-recorded by a lot, I am thinking that once you're actually seeing this and I upload it to the gallery, I'm thinking I'm gonna come in and update everything a little with the newer features that we got in the newer updates. I also didn't put anything on the pier while I built this and I later on had the idea of maybe placing a wedding art on there. I'm not sure if it would be functional but it would definitely look very cool. I'm obviously not going to change everything but a few things here and there maybe. Oh and here's also what it looks like from the map view. I think we got really lucky with how the game generated the preview for this one. Sometimes they're really ugly but this one turned out quite well. Okay, with that, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end and thank you for checking out my other stuff as well. And I shall see you one week from now where, I think I'm already gonna tease it, 
we're gonna be building using just the Snowy Escape DLC and the base game. And we're actually gonna be building in the Snowy Mountains as well. So that's gonna be pretty cool. See you there!